Can you talk us through the money that you've managed to raise and why? Yes. Um, Rippling um, is, among other things, a payroll company. We make software for businesses to manage everything related to employees, so payroll, HR, IT, finance, expense reimbursements. And we think we can cut a lot of the administrative work involved in running those things out by doing it all in one place. And the way payroll works is companies send us money a few days ahead of payday, and then we send it along to their employees. And so when Silicon Valley Bank failed, they were previously the rails for our payroll service. Um, we had to move in just a few hours over to J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, but we also, um, we knew on Friday when the bank failed, there were 50,000 people that we needed to make sure got paid, whose companies had already sent us money. And so what we did is we actually took about $130 million of our own capital and sent it out the door to make sure that everybody got their paycheck on Friday um, and moved heaven right. and earth to do that. My uh, colleague, Katie Roof, has just texted me. She's been writing about your situation this morning. <clears throat> Given now that the SVB situation is kind of more resolved, what are you going to do with that $500 million? Yeah. So we raised the money to make sure that we'd be able, even if the, the FDIC did nothing, that we'd be able to backstop our client funds. Um, but as it turns out, um, you know, depositors were protected. So we, we now, Rippling is incredibly well capitalized. We have, you know, almost a billion dollars on our balance sheet. What would you have done if the deposits were not insured? We, we wanted to make sure that any company that had sent us money, we were going to get their employees paid. Um, and so that was why we wanted to make sure we had this as a backup plan to a backup plan to a backup plan. Caro, this is an amazing conversation because it's a snapshot of what happened in the moment. We're mm. hearing so many founders sort of pretty dire about the long-term impacts of SVB and being able to raise funds, and yet you have a company here that did it in three days. And also, you luckily already had a banking provider other than SVB, which is JP Morgan, but we went to our own audience and said, how hard is it as a founder, as a fund even, mm. to diversify your banks? It's pretty hard, it's complicated, said 44%. To that point, Parker, was, was it complicated for you to rev up the JP Morgan, and also are you now more diversified even than that? It was. I mean, look, we have a, a number of different banking relationships, many different bank accounts across the world. Um, but we always assumed that, um, you know, if something happened with SVB, which was the main role, role, uh, rails for our payroll service, we'd have about two weeks to get something up and running. And then what happened is when the bank failed, we only had about three and a half hours. And so we put a team of 15 of the best engineers in the company on getting this up and running in that time frame time frame and then a much larger team over mm. the weekend and the days to come really just making sure that everything was solid everything was well grooved and sort of compressed that timeline to make sure that nothing was interrupted for our clients what's also so fascinating about your story Parker is the support of your venture capital supporters and in particular the round that was led by Green Oaks Neil Meta. how important was it to have VCs on hand that would just rally the troops and give you money when you needed it we're, you know, we're incredibly fortunate that there are a bunch of investors that have been really supportive of Rippling, um, that we've known for a long time, and that have, you know, even, you know, even as the funding environment for late-stage startups has gotten shaky, have always really wanted to find ways to own more of Rippling. And so we were able to put together on very short notice around, you know, at a, at a really fair price, um, uh, you know, at an $11.25 billion valuation to get a bunch more capital in the business. And that's going to allow us sort of no matter what happens here to focus on building the right products for our customers um, and, and growing our company. You kind of scrambled to take money from your balance sheet to help with payroll for others. Have you been made whole again after what's happened? And, and just reflecting on your customer base, is there still problems out there? Are there still problems out there for people trying to make payroll to move money around? We, on Monday morning when SVB reopened, we got all of the customer funds out of SVB. And so we've been made completely whole for all of this. And there are problems still in the ecosystem? Uh, not for us. I mean, our, our systems are as solid as ever, just with a different bank, with JP Morgan Chase. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen, you know, more broadly to the economy um, as a result of some of the shakiness in the banking sector. But we feel very good about, about sort of our service. We're billing this 500 million as an emergency fundraise. And I just wanted yeah. to ask how you felt about the terms of that raise. Were you happy? Was it a yeah. compromise? I, you know, I really disagree with the characteriz characterization of it as an emergency. Um, I think it came together very quickly. 
Um, but look, this was great capital on attractive terms. I mean, there aren't a lot of late stage startups that can raise that amount of capital in a very short period of time at, at these valuations. Um, I thought it was a, a great deal for the company and I, I feel really good about it. Hmm. A headline currently says emergency funds will quickly maybe update that to new funds, Parker. Ultimately, hmm. what now? Do you expand? Do you use the 500 million to grow? Or did you, <clears throat> can you in some way sort of give it back? Um, we're we're going to focus. We we're going to use this money to sort of continue to invest in our product, in research and development. Uh, Rippling has a really unusual commitment to R and D among SaaS tech companies. We spend an enormous amount in comparison to our revenue on developing new products, building new software, and we think it's what makes us uh, have the best product on the market. Parker, you're a fintech. You understand financial plumbing better than most. Do you think at this moment, this single point of failure that you had avoided by having other banks, does it make you worry about a centralized financial system as it stands? I mean, look, we, we have different banking relationships with a number of, of different banks, and we, we continue to sort of um, diversify um, sort of the, the rails that we have within the banking sector. Um, I think in this case, things worked out pretty well. Um, we found out 9 a.m. on Friday, on the day that employees were supposed to get paid, um, that SVB was shut down and all of the funds that were supposed to arrive for payday on Friday were locked up. And we had three and a half hours to get things up and running with J.P. Morgan. Um, and we were able to do that in three and a half hours and get people paid using our own capital. So I look at it as sort of a real a real success story about our ability to make sure that, you know, 50,000 ordinary Americans that were paid through Rippling got paid last Friday.